Finally, right before the keynote is going to take place at the end of this month, we're getting some follow-up leaks. We haven't heard anything about the 16-inch MacBook Pro in a while other than, you know, it, it's happening. And Ming-Chi Kuo has confirmed that we're also getting scissor key mechanism back again. But finally have some more stuff to work with, and it probably tells us a little bit more about it than you'd think. So let's do some recapping for the 16-inch MacBook Pro leaks. Let's begin. <laughs> This leak comes from a Chinese language sibling website from Charger Lab. It's pronounced Chong Dia To, Chong Dia Two. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but they have a track record is what I'm trying to say. In the past, they were able to give us leaks on chargers before they came out. Back in July of 2018, it was the same source that leaked the 18 watt USB-C charge brick that didn't ship for another four months with the new iPad Pros, which means that while there's not an extensive history with this leaker, they did get that right. So we have reason to believe that they're not just trolling us. But more recently, they've leaked that Apple is working on a 96 watt USB-C charge brick, which for those of you who don't know, the highest watt charge brick Apple makes right now is currently for the 15 inch MacBook Pro. They've been using it ever since the 2016 model came out and it's 87 watts, which is leading most of us to believe that this 96 watt charge brick, almost 10 watts higher than the last one, is going to be specifically designated for the 16 inch MacBook Pro being unveiled at the end of this month. Now, this is also interesting because USB-C and Thunderbolt Thunderbolt 3 in general kind of gets maxed out at 100 watts, so Apple's kind of finding the very, very upper limit of what USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 on their MacBooks can be capable of. But the good news of this is that if you're seeing a 96 watt charge brick leak, that means that this next generation MacBook Pro is going to be needing more power than our 15 inch models currently are using. You guys know from this year's refresh that after Apple's finally kind of slightly perfected the butterfly keyboard mechanism and they've got very, very powerful CPU GPUs and GPUs shipping in the 15 inch MacBook Pro, some of which can rival the performance of my iMac Pro, they can handle all that with 87 watts. So the fact that there's a new MacBook Pro coming out, most likely with thinner bezels, and it's gonna require a 96 watt brick to plug in and charge from, that means it very well could be far more powerful than the current 15 inch MacBook Pro, using more power for that CPU and GPU, or maybe perhaps Apple just wants to have faster charging options, but that's usually not a huge priority for them. And given Ming-Chi Kuo, has detailed in the past that Apple's going to be switching back to a scissor key mechanism, one that more people are happy with because more travel and more reliability as the butterfly keyboard has been very, very cumbersome and failing a lot for people with sticky keys and dust getting stuck underneath them. Even though the butterfly keyboard, the fourth generation one, hasn't had any reports of failing, so it's kind of a shame. Like right at that moment when they figure out how to make the butterfly keyboard good, that's when they decide, oh, you know what? Let's just stop using it. Let's go back to scissor keys. But honestly, I I think this is a good move because there's a lot of people who just don't like the butterfly keyboards even when they are working functionally. They have a bad track record. It didn't go very well during the last four years for them. So switching back to something we know works and we know is reliable and we know a lot of people are happy with is a good move for the MacBook line. But what it also tells us is since these scissor key mechanisms, the standard ones, are much thicker than the butterfly keyboard design, plus we're getting this 96 watt USB-C charge brick leak, does that potentially mean that this next generation MacBook Pro could be a little bit chunk might end up being a little bit thicker than what we're currently used to with our MacBook Pros, which if you ask most professionals that use their MacBook Pros extensively, they're all fine with that. Everybody has mostly said, at least on the tech community, we'd be fine with MacBooks getting thicker as long as they had better cooling systems so that you could actually run the CPU at those turbo boost speeds more often. While Apple has fixed the thermal throttling problem on the last generation MacBook Pros, they still don't quite hit that advertised turbo boost speed as often as people would like. So perhaps Perhaps Apple's finally caving and just starting to listen to people and kind of like what they did with the iPhones over the past few years, which is, hey, you know what? Let's make these things thicker and have better battery lives because we don't seem to have that many customers complaining about how thick and chunky the iPhone is. So Apple, ever since the iPhone 6 actually, has consistently made those phones thicker to sport bigger batteries so that they can last longer, sport more features and better cameras and stuff like that. And most people have been fine with it. There's not that much complaining about the thickness of iPhones phones and I think somewhat similarly to the MacBook line there really hasn't been that much complaining about how thin and light the MacBooks are. Most of us when we use our laptops are not holding them you know we're putting them on our lap or we're putting them on our desk so even though these powerful computers are meant to be taken with us if we could get some more performance out of a slightly thicker design and maybe some better cooling systems on the inside I think most of us would be okay with that. Don't think Apple's completely doing a 180 degree shift in design though because they do still 
still have some patents for some keyboard designs that are even thinner than the butterfly keyboard. So yes, that means Apple is still obsessed with trying to find even thinner designs for the MacBook. I just think more appropriately for the naming scheme, probably Apple is going to make the MacBook Pro lineup perhaps more chunky and thicker as years go by and perhaps the MacBook Air even more thinner than it currently is. So this is still speculative. We don't really have leaks to confirm this. All we know is that Apple's working on a next generation MacBook Pro, the 16 inch version with the thinner bezels and this 96 watt USB-C charge brick and probably a much more powerful CPU and GPU shipping standard with this MacBook will be unveiled at the end of the month. And you betcha it's gonna be expensive. I'm predicting this thing is likely gonna start at like $3,000 and I'm still torn on the idea of whether or not it's replacing the current 15 inch MacBook Pros or it's going to be sold alongside. Perhaps this is going to be getting its own category treatment and most likely they're going to advertise it working with the previously announced Pro Display XDR which you guys know I'm not a big fan of. I think that monitor's stupid. I get that it has a market but it's just such a tiny one. I wish Apple wouldn't cater so much to people who spend 40 grand on monitors but they did. They chose to and Apple has detailed that one of the charging pass through USB-C ports on the back of that Pro Display XDR allows for 96 watts. Apple themselves has confirmed that. So for those people who want to, with a single cable, connect their MacBook to an external monitor, in this case a 6K monitor, you'll be able to do that while also charging the 16-inch MacBook Pro and outputting that 6K image. That's in theory what they're likely going to be working on. They're going to demo that, hey, you can plug in this insanely expensive laptop to this insanely expensive monitor. Someone will do it. You know, like the John Morrison's out there will buy these expensive things. I'm not going to, but I'm definitely interested to see how they're going to work and how this new design is going to look. And if it's just going to be, eh, there's some thinner bezels and a little bit different keyboard, or is it going to physically look noticeably different than previous generation MacBook Pros? And I think if they could take the best of the latest generation MacBooks and kind of combine the more traditional design of the 2015 and earlier MacBook Pro, take the best of both of those and merge them into something that can make more professionals happy, then this could end up being a really really good sell for Apple's MacBook line, and I could see a lot of people end up buying them. Those who want a really powerful workstation that they can take with them, even if it's a little over four pounds, that's okay. The bummer though is you know that this $3,000 MacBook is probably still gonna ship with 256 gigs of storage. That's how Apple ships the regular Mac Pro. It would be great if they stopped doing that, you know? And the bummer is it's also probably gonna have a crappy webcam. I wish just for once they could start putting the cameras they put in the iPad Pros in the MacBook Pros, but I don't know, we'll see if that's gonna happen this year. Likely no Face ID either. I feel like we would have gotten leaks for that as well within Mac OS Catalina betas. We haven't seen any of those, so you're still probably gonna rock Touch ID on this generation MacBook Pro. So yeah, you know, the more I talk about it, there's gonna be plenty of things to be annoyed by, but uh, probably less so than the last generation, which, you know, is always good. Anywho, what are your guys' thoughts on this next generation 16-inch MacBook Pro shipping with the biggest charge brick Apple has ever made. Feel free to let me know what you're thinking by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here. I will see you guys in the next one.